and it goes. I'm gonna press escape and close it. Anyways, what are we looking at? We're basically looking at the editor. We have the viewport that's right here. That's basically whatever is in the screen. Hold the right click to move around with it, as I said. Hold Alt, right click to zoom in and out. And hold the middle mouse button and the Alt to move around. My middle mouse button's broken right now. Anyways, uh, what are we looking at here? We got the options button on the top left, which is just like usual. And then we got little drop down buttons over here. I want to talk about the windows before I go into like the small details. So here's the editor viewport. You can move it around as usual. All right. So this is going to be your default view every time you open Unigent, whether it's C Sharp or C++. On the left, we have a materials. Everything that's here are called scriptable materials, or in other words, shaders. These are basically shaders. So we don't worry about that right now. We don't really need to use it anymore, but they have, uh, what do we call, read-only materials, which means these are the basic ones that come in every core projects so they're uneditable so if like let's say you wanted to add a post processing you could just add this or create a child and add it but we'll go to that later we we'll go to the properties and this is your property notes well basically in c sharp your properties are your c sharp classes that you create and then they add here into the property step I barely use this. I normally just close it and let it run on its own. Sometimes I close materials, but I really need it sometimes, especially for my actual materials that I have to like load and unload. So I leave that on the side. We go to the right side, we got world nodes. World nodes is basically the objects in this world. Nodes, if you've already guessed it by now, are your objects in the world itself. So we have static content. If you click on each object it lights up since we clicked on the square we're over here and it just clicked on the cube square god damn it it's a cube click on cone the cones highlighted click on the cylinder highlighted spheres highlighted exactly on the right side the parameters whenever we click on an object it gives its parameters so right now it has the transform settings its position rotation scales the options that you can add with it any components and properties as we called over here the properties if you want to re-add a tab let's say you closed this by accident you want to re-add it go on windows editor viewport show and that's going to be the option so if you want property you just press plus you click and drag it in there and then reference would be um asset link reference in this case it's a prefab so this object's not really just a regular simple item that you just added into there. Like let's say if I press right click, create, uh, I don't know, sphere, whatever, press okay. Right there, that is a node. But once I click it and I add it into our asset browser, asset browser being your files and folders, now that sphere became an asset link or a node reference, which is basically a prefab so now we have a prefab and if you want to edit the object itself you just press edit and now you add the object and now you can edit those objects the next one we're gonna go is the settings on the right this is your world settings for the editor you basically can just let's just move it a little bit to see it you can edit the global settings for every little thing and we can go over each one one at a time but just by reading it you'll understand what it is ss dirt and ss bevel are two important ones in ssr these are basically your small level of details so if you're making realistic stuff these things will help you immensely and i'll just make a tutorial for it separately because it does take a while if you go to the art samples they have so many uh, detailed like displays for every one of these 
settings and you could just go wild with it. And last but not least, the asset browser. Of course, there's the console. That's just your regular console. There's the asset browser. The core and configuration files are basically Unigen files. Don't touch them. Don't do anything with them. You can use them as references, but don't. you can't delete them. So go ahead and try. Data is where all your files are going to be. And you just add files from like your from like FBXs to like sound files to JPEGs to whatever you want. And once you add a file, let's see if I have any file. Uh, let's take this picture. Oh, that's not a picture. Whatever. Let's just take this and copy it here. It's going to automatically import it immediately. Since this is an MP4, it doesn't really need any type of import setting changes but if you had fbx or anything it'll ask you for a few changes whether you want to keep the materials the animations and all that stuff go out with it so anyways this is just the beginning of what it looks let's go up here and understand what these buttons are at the beginning bake all lighting you'll know exactly what that is so it bakes the lighting so you don't really have to like animate the light every time you change any settings with the sun. But at the moment, let's not press it. You have the ability to change how much you want to bake the light too. Over here, let's go to the middle button, which is the most important. If we press the configuration button, this is the configuration of the debug box that we when we press play this edits whatever it is so right now it's a resolution 1600 to 900 so if I want to change it to like let's say 1000 by 800 and I press play it's gonna be 1000 by 800 I'm not gonna keep it full screen because that annoys me run current world would be the way the way you don't know the way all right over here is the button which toggles sounds on and off. Right now there's literally no sounds here, so it's all good. This will enable particles. If you remove this, you won't even be able to click the middle button. So let's click this. And the middle button is simulations. So over here, you notice when I press play before, these were all on the, uh, on the ground. So when you click on this, let's click edit just to look at it. There is the node tab, which is the objects tab and its properties and its materials. There's also a physics tab here, and it was given a rigid body physics or body rigid physics, whichever one you like. So this one has it enabled and it has gravity. So now if we press this, it's going to simulate those. It's not just for that one, but any objects that have physics inside this world, it will simulate it. So let's just press play. Yeah, we'll save and enable since I added that ball. And now it's gonna play as if it just enabled the physics. Once we press off, it will go back to its original positions. Uh, the next button over here, this one's a little important for like when you're adding stuff into the floor. So like, let's say this object, just press this button and it adds into the floor. Uh, oh no. Here we go. Now your basic hotkey would be the W E R. So W for moving, E for rotating, R for scaling, and this will drop the node onto the normal. So since the center of the pivot is in the middle of the cube, if I press this button, it's gonna go on there immediately. And then you have the snap to surface, snap to scale, snap angles, and snap by grid. You all know what to do. Just play around with it. I recommend just downloading some of those trees and scans and try throwing it around in the world. Next episode, I'm going to show you how to make a terrain really fast, really easy, really realistic, and then add everything onto it easily, and then we can make a world from there. So as I said, the W, E, R buttons, they're up here. And then 
this is your mouse mode. Normally I keep it windows mode. I, I will never ever switch it around. It's just a lot easier to just use that. Crossing mode just means anything that hits it. While windows mode means anything that's inside that square. In terms of adding stuff, reloading, your world would be your scenes that you add. So open new scene, a new world would be create a new one, etc., etc. Editing would be, let's say you move this, edit, undo action, goes back. Simple stuff, clone, clone transforms, all that stuff, parent on parent, very easy to understand. Create button, you don't really need to use it. Just press right click on the scene and then press create there, unless you want to, that's up to you. You can actually just create whatever you want. Uh, let's actually add water. So we just right click somewhere. Let's add water. There's a global and a mesh. Mesh would require you to actually add a plane and it turns it into water. Global would mean global. And in Unigen, the best part about global is that it's infinite. So I just click somewhere and it's there. Now let's just move it a little up around. Let's see. Yeah, looks good enough. No, it's a little weird. Oh. Now it looks nice. We're covered in an island filled with water. You can also create just right click. This right click's broken too. I might as well use that create button. Uh, right click sky and sky or you can go a little further and just create clouds. It's gonna compute it in a few seconds, but you'll actually have realistic clouds. Oh, we have a nice giant cloud that's just stuck on top of us. Good enough. Now, if we click on the sun, you can actually rotate it and have it looking like, okay, we'll make it look like it's just the beginning of sun. Anyways. So test it out, enjoy what you like, because there's a lot of fun in just playing around with stuff rather than someone just telling you over and over again what to do. So in the end of the day, this is just a new program. I'm learning it just as much as you are, but the difference is I will teach you as much as I can. And then from there, you guys are free to go wild and beyond. Next video would definitely be about me making a terrain and adding it over here and then making it realistic as possible with minimum amount of effort. Most of it's gonna be mental thought processes from the beginning and that's gonna just help you later on in life. All right. Thank you, and we'll meet again.